guys are having an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, or night, whatever it is for you, when this video finally reaches you. Today's video, you guys, is very eerie because we are once again going to be diving into yet another paranormal game, which is actually perhaps one of the most dangerous versions of the game of tag. Dead Man's Tag, otherwise known as How to Play Tag with the Dead. Now, the title of the game is pretty self-explanatory. You essentially go out to play tag with the dead. Whether they're spirits or entities, you don't know, but you summon upon them in a game of tag. Now, this is actually deemed one of the most dangerous paranormal games in the world, so I'm really, really interested to read how to play with you guys and give you guys my thoughts and opinions, because if you guys have been watching all of 31 Days of Halloween, Earlier this month, we actually went out to a cemetery where ghost children are said to play tag and some pretty eerie, unsettling things happened. And so I'm interested to know how one goes about actually summoning some spirits or entities to play the game of tag. So here we go. <laughs> it says the players that you're going to need at least three participants requirements, one flashlight per participant one timekeeping device per participant, which is optional but recommended, a playing field, ideally the playing field will be outdoors, spread out over a very large area and equipped with spaces or geographic features that may be used as hiding places. Instructions, the invitation. Begin shortly after dark on a night with little to no moonlight, an overcast cloudy night or a night on which the new moon falls are ideal. Gather all the participants together with their flashlights and timekeeping devices at the playing field. As a group, decide where home base will be. Home base must be a physical object in the area you can touch. An easily identifiable rock, tree, or other unique geographic feature is ideal. As a group, you decide how long you wish to hide once the game's begun. This length of time should be measured in seconds. A number between 10 and 100 is recommended. Wait until the night has fully fallen. When it is fully dark, assemble all the participants at home base and face out to the darkness. Choose one person to speak the following. We invite you to play a game of tag. Home base is, and then you name your home base. When the game begins, we have until the count of, blank, <laughs> whatever time you choose, to hide. Then you may look for us. Once we've returned home, the game is done. Then in unison, call out together, you're it. Scatter, run, hide. If using timekeeping devices, refer to them to track how long you have before it comes looking for you. If not, estimate the passage of time as accurately as possible through the method of your choice. In both cases, use your time wisely. The main event. Your goal is to make it back to home base without getting caught. Do whatever necessary to accomplish this goal. The following pieces of advice may prove useful. You may move around and or change your hiding location as much or as little as you desire. Do not hide or move with any other participants. Your flashlight may be used whenever necessary. However, it's recommended that you use it as sparingly as possible. Nothing makes someone easier to find in the dark than a bright light indicating where they are. If at any point, you sense someone else nearby, you can do one of the following two things. Remain hiding where you are, or leave your current hiding place and either attempt to find a new one or run directly to home base. Note, whomever or whatever you sense nearby may not be one of the other participants. Above all, whether hiding, moving, or running from home base, remain as silent as possible. When you see an opening to get to home base, take it. When you return to home base, touch it with your hand and call out the word safe. Note, you must both physically touch home base and call out safe in order for your return home to count. Wait for the other participants to return to home base. Note, before proceeding, confirm that all participants assembled at home base are the same participants with whom you began the game. If they are not, do not proceed. When all participants have returned home, Face out into the darkness once more. Choose one person to speak the following. We win. The game is over. Thank you for playing. And then disperse. 
go home, but in the future, when you're alone in the dark, always be careful. Your opponent might try to begin another game with you, whether you want to play or not. Additional notes. The game's difficulty may be scaled or increased by making the following adjustments. Choosing a cemetery as your playing field, deciding upon a brief length of time with which to hide, playing without a flashlight, playing without a timekeeping device, and or playing with just one participant. However, it is not recommended that you play this game with only one participant. Do not attempt to finish the game if the participants gathered at home base are not the same participants with whom you began. Do not assume there is only one it. If a participant is caught, avoid interacting with that participant at all costs. If they've been caught, you'll know. You might also be able to strike a bargain to get them back. Be warned, souls don't come cheap. If the participant who has been caught is you, I hope you trust your friends and I hope they'll have your back when you need it most. And that's how you play the game, Dead Man's Tag. So from what I've gathered from this, essentially you are basically saying if you catch me, you can have me. Because when it says that souls don't come cheap and you'll have to place a bargain for your friend back, what I gather from that is that in playing this game, it's not just a game of you're it, you're it, it's a game of if you catch me, I'm yours. And that in and of itself is very, very dangerous. Now I read up on a girl named Annie's experience playing this game and I guess what had happened was she was playing with a few of her friends and as she was running back to home base, she saw a very evil, sinister looking woman running towards her. And when she touched the tree and said that she was safe, the woman disappeared. Now for months and years afterwards, she thought that one of her friends who had suggested to play the game had had another one of their friends there to scare her. But years later, as she was walking home late one night in a pathway between two like forests on either side, she heard a woman say, did you want to play that game of tag again? And she recognized the voice as the woman who'd ran at her when she played the game, which didn't make any sense because it was nowhere near where that friend had lived or where any of her friends would have lived and the joke just wouldn't have went on that long. So she warns people to be very, very careful in playing the game and claims that if she hadn't made it to the tree in time, she doesn't know what would have happened to her. I don't know you guys, the entire concept of playing tag at the price of a soul or an expensive price with either a spirit or an entity just doesn't sit right with me. It's one of the biggest reasons that while we were at the cemetery with the children who enjoy playing tag, I never said, do you want to play tag with me or let's play tag? Because that, you just never know when you're messing with things of that nature. And this game seems like it's a lot deeper and darker than just simply, you're it and moving on. Now I've personally never heard of this specific paranormal game so I'm very curious to hear what you guys think of it. In a way it sounds a lot like Manhunt to me where you have to return to your base to win the game but I'm very very curious to know what you guys think of this game. Have any of you ever played it? If so what was your specific and particular experience? And yeah, that is basically it for today's video. It's been a little while since we've really dove into different paranormal games. And while I do not encourage anybody to play paranormal games personally, I do think that it's important to break down what could make each individual game so dangerous because so many of these games are played amongst younger children and people who think that it's just a game. And well, for many people who play the game, I'm sure it was just a game and an adrenaline rush just trying to get back to the tree. For others, dark experiences have happened. So I'm very, very interested to know what you guys think. With that being said, that is it for today's video. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, I would seriously, absolutely love it if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button and join the Reese's Pieces. And please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. <laughs> Remember I love do all things with kindness. And until next time, I love you.